This is video number 27. And just like a chip needs a circuit, we need your support and cheer. Hit that subscribe button, give us a thumbs up like you would a successful chip yield, and ring that notification bell so you won't miss out on our electrifying content. Don't forget to show your extra appreciation with a super thanks, it's like fuel for our creative journey. Now, ready to jump again? Arf, arf, arf. Bow wow. Yep, yep, light speed. Now let's see how the CMP polisher works to remove the deposited film on a wafer for IC device fabrication, achieving both local and global planarization. The left figure shows a schematic of a typical polisher setup for CMP applications. During CMP, a patterned wafer is pressed face down against a rotating pad, which is mostly made of polyurethane. A retainer ring is placed outside the wafer to prevent it from slipping out of the pressing head. Both the wafer carrier and the platen rotate in the same direction, but at slightly different rotational velocities. The polishing pad usually has grooves and micropores on its surface to aid in slurry transportation to and from the pad wafer interface. The pores create asperity, while the grooves ensure uniform delivery of slurry to the contact area between the wafer and pad, covering the entire pad area. The slurry typically contains abrasive nanoparticles, oxidizing agents, and other chemical additives. The slurry flows to the center of the pad and, due to centrifugal force, is uniformly distributed across the entire pad surface. This helps create a thin fluid layer across the pad surface. When the wafer makes physical contact with the pad surface, the chemicals in the slurry, along with the abrasive nanoparticles and pad asperities, provide the chemical and mechanical action necessary for material removal, leading to local and global surface planarization. The conditioning mechanism is a process used to soften the pad before actual wafer polishing to enhance the polish rate and maintain constant roughness while distributing slurry uniformly across the pad surface. This process is achieved by polishing a diamond embedded mounting against the pad for a certain period before actual polishing. If you have experience polishing wood with sandpaper, you will know that the sandpaper becomes less effective over time because the polished wood materials reduce the asperity of the sandpaper. Similarly, the asperity of the CMP pad is reduced by the polished material, which decreases the material removal rate. This is called the glazing phenomenon. The recovery of asperity with a diamond disc is called the deglazing process. Deglazing can be in situ, where the diamond disc and wafer polish on the pad simultaneously, or ex situ, where the diamond pad is polished after the wafer is polished. Slurry, pads, and diamond discs are the three major consumables in the CMP process. CMP is quite an expensive and exhaustive process due to the high usage of these consumables. Typically, the cost of consumables, COC, is 1.5 times the cost of ownership, COO, in 300 mm silicon wafer fab, meaning more money is spent on consumables than on the equipment itself. Through the evolution of CMP technology, the development of slurry has been more significant than that of the equipment, which is quite different from other trends in semiconductor process evolution. In this slide, we'll delve into CMP equipment, focusing on the tools provided by Applied Materials, a leader in market share. In the semiconductor industry, advancements in processes like photolithography and film deposition often coincide with improvements in materials, equipment, and process methods. While equipment types and other semiconductor processes have diversified over time, CMP equipment has trended towards convergence. Typically, when discussing CMP equipment, we refer to the CMP polisher module. However, the actual CMP equipment encompasses more, including a cleaner module. Additionally, it includes supply devices for slurry and cleaning chemicals, as well as utilities like N2, air, and electricity connections. To prepare wafers for polishing and ensure they exit dry, a dry-in and dry-out cleaner is attached to the polisher and fabs. Since cleaning immediately follows CMP, it's also known as post-CMP cleaner or in-situ cleaner. Advancements in CMP equipment have focused on improving in wafer removal rate uniformity and enhancing throughput. For better uniformity, modern CMP tools employ membrane-type multi-zone heads. 
These heads allow for precise control of pressure across various zones on the wafer, ensuring a consistent polishing rate and reducing defects. Regarding throughput, CMP equipment has seen significant changes. Initially, configurations included two heads, one platen, and one cleaner. As demands increased, equipment evolved to include four heads and three platens with one cleaner. The latest developments feature four heads, four platens, and two cleaners, greatly improving production efficiency by enabling more simultaneous processing and better cleaning of wafers. While various second-generation equipment emerged, Applied Materials Mira platform became the standard. Currently, fierce competition in equipment development includes Applied Materials Reflection LKP and Ibarra's 303X. Applied Materials equipment is highly regarded for performance and productivity in the polisher module, while Ibarra's cleaner module gains recognition for its non-contact cleaning technology, vital for sub-10 nanometers node devices. Looking ahead, we anticipate a trend towards narrowing down equipment types, with each company's strengths integrated into a single, standardized type. In this slide, we're examining the wafer route throughout the entire CMP process using the Mira Mesa model from Applied Materials. This CMP tool is structured into three main modules, the transfer unit, cleaning unit, and polishing unit. The process begins with the wafer housed in a FUP, which stands for Front Opening Unified Pod. The wafer enters the CMP system in a dry state and exits in the same dry condition. Initially, the wafer moves from the FUP to the polishing unit via the transfer unit, which includes components such as the ROARS robot, input pedestal, and long robot. The polishing unit is composed of four heads and three platens. The wafer is picked up by one Titan CMP head at the head clean load unload unit, or HCLU. The cross that holds the four heads rotates, moving the wafer to the first CMP platen for the polishing process. During CMP, a slurry, consisting of deionized water, abrasives, and additives, is dispensed via a slurry dispenser arm. The CMP head presses the wafer against the CMP pad surface to apply mechanical friction force for polishing. In this configuration, the wafer is inverted, with its polishing surface in direct contact with the CMP pad's textured surface, known as asperity, which facilitates friction. Downward pressure applied to the wafer is regulated by a membrane within the CMP head, adjusting the air pressure inside it. This membrane's pressure is carefully managed across different zones to ensure uniform polishing rates across the entire wafer. Both the CMP head and pad rotate synchronously at similar speeds, either clockwise or counterclockwise, throughout the polishing process. The retainer ring prevents the wafer from slipping out between the pressing head and platen. A diamond disc pad is employed to restore the CMP pad's surface texture, ensuring consistent polishing rates. Monitoring and controlling the CMP process involves observing changes in friction torque and light reflection on the wafer surface to determine endpoint conditions effectively. Following the polishing stage, the wafer proceeds to the cleaning unit. This unit includes a megasonic bath and a roll brushing unit. Various chemicals, such as diluted HF, ammonium hydroxide, and SC1, are utilized to eliminate CMP byproducts and residual slurry. A roller brush made from very soft polyvinyl alcohol material gently brushes the wafer surface. Subsequently, the wafer undergoes drying in a spin rinse dryer module before being transferred back into the FUP. This comprehensive process ensures that the wafer undergoes effective polishing and cleaning, maintaining high standards of cleanliness and readiness for subsequent semiconductor manufacturing steps. In this slide, we'll provide a detailed overview of the wafer cleaning and drying processes that follow CMP polishing in the cleaner module of CMP equipment. After the CMP polishing, the wafer requires thorough cleaning and drying to ensure it is free of contaminants and ready for the next manufacturing steps. Compared to cleaning and drying after photolithography or dry etching, post-CMP cleaning presents both advantages and challenges. The advantage is that since the wafer surface is already planarized during the polishing process, there is no risk of pattern collapse due to surface tension. However, the challenge is that nano-sized abrasive particles from the CMP process adhere to the wafer surface and must be removed completely.
These particles are harmful to wafer production yield if left on the surface. Chemical cleaning alone, such as liftoff methods, is insufficient for removing these particles due to the strong van der Waals forces between the particles and the wafer surface. Therefore, physical cleaning methods are essential and typically include megasonic and brush cleaning techniques. Megasonic cleaning utilizes an RF generator to produce ultrasonic waves, which generate cavitation bubbles in the cleaning solution. These bubbles form during the low-pressure phase of the ultrasonic waves and then rapidly collapse or implode during the high-pressure phase. This implosion creates intense localized shock waves and high temperatures that effectively dislodge abrasive particles from the wafer surface. Typically, frequencies between 0.5 and 1 MHz are employed with an SC1 alkaline solution to efficiently remove CMP abrasives. However, traditional megasonic baths, which are typically of the dipping type, can be prone to cross-contamination and have lower cleaning efficiency. To address these issues, Ibarra developed the Megapi system, a single wafer cleaning method that improves cleaning efficiency and reduces the risk of contamination. Following megasonic cleaning, brush cleaning is performed to further remove any residual abrasives. This process involves scrubbing the wafer with a polyvinyl alcohol or PVA sponge while spraying a cleaning solution onto the rotating wafer. The PVA sponge is chosen for its softness, which helps to minimize the risk of scratching the wafer. The cleaning solution is typically ammonium hydroxide or SC1 solution, and sometimes hydrofluoric acid is used for metal contaminants. Brush cleaning is a contact method where the wafer and brush make direct contact. The challenge here is to maintain an optimal contact distance to effectively remove particles without causing damage or transferring contaminants. With shrinking device sizes, non-contact cleaning methods are increasingly preferred to prevent damage. One such method is the two-fluid jet system, which is akin to a car washing gun. This system utilizes two types of fluids, nitrogen gas and deionized water. The system sprays a mist of these cleaning fluids onto the rotating wafer. The nitrogen gas fluid helps to generate a high-pressure impact, while the deionized water fluid aids in removing the abrasive particles. Proper adjustment of the pressure is crucial to avoid damaging the wafer, but non-contact methods generally offer a reduced risk compared to contact cleaning. Although both megasonic cleaning and the two-fluid jet cleaning methods are non-contact, the two-fluid jet system generally demonstrates superior performance in removing abrasive particles. After the cleaning process, the wafer must be dried to prevent watermark defects. The aim is to replace the water on the wafer surface with isopropyl alcohol, IPA, without leaving any defects. Two common types of dryers used are the Marangoni and Rotogoni dryers. The Marangoni dryer, often used by applied materials company, sprays nitrogen gas and IPA at the meniscus region as the wafer is withdrawn from the deionized water bath. This process utilizes the Marangoni effect, where differences in surface tension between IPA and water create a strong liquid flow toward the deionized bath, helping to remove particles and prevent their reabsorption. Gravitational force also assists in this process as the wafer is pulled out vertically. In contrast, the Rotogoni dryer, used by Ibarra Company, employs a combination of Marangoni force and centrifugal force. This setup aids in pulling water from the center of the wafer to its edges, enhancing the drying process. This thorough cleaning and drying process ensures that the wafer is free from contaminants and defects. Maintaining high standards of quality as it progresses to subsequent semiconductor manufacturing steps. In this slide, we will provide a detailed overview of the three major consumables used in the CMP polishing process within the polisher module of CMP equipment. These consumables include CMP slurry, CMP pad, and pad conditioner, all of which play crucial roles in both the cost and performance of the CMP process. First, Let's discuss CMP slurry, which has been a driving force in the advancement of the CMP process, serving as a primary technology leader in its development. CMP slurry is a colloidal solution designed to keep abrasive particles evenly suspended without settling. This slurry consists of abrasive nanoparticles, as well as various functional chemicals including pH controllers, anticoagulating agents, corrosion inhibitors, surfactants, polymers, oxidizers, buffers, chelating or complexing agents, 
and bactericides or fungicides. The primary abrasives are often silica or cerea, with variations based on their synthesis method, such as fumed or colloidal abrasives. Depending on the material being polished, slurries are categorized as oxide slurries for silicon, silicon nitride, and silicon oxide, and metal slurries for tungsten, copper, and aluminum. They are also classified according to their application within the device, such as ILD slurry or STI slurry. To prevent scratches during polishing, the slurry must remain in a well-dispersed colloidal state. If the abrasives aggregate and grow larger, they can either settle out of the solution, then act as sources of scratches on the wafer surface during the polishing process. To maintain this dispersion, bulk slurry should be regularly agitated, only the supernatant of settled slurry should be used, and precipitates should be filtered periodically. Point of use, POU, filters, which are placed at the final stage of slurry supply, just before it reaches the CMP system, ensure that any remaining particulates are removed right before the slurry is applied to the wafer. Next, the CMP pad is essential for effectively delivering the slurry to the wafer and inducing the necessary friction between the wafer and the slurry for polishing. The pad features various groove designs to ensure uniform slurry distribution. A CMP pad consists of a top pad, a sub pad, and adhesive layers. The top pad, with its grooves and pores, directly impacts polishing performance factors, such as removal rate, defects, and dishing. The sub pad, typically softer than the top pad, is designed to improve global uniformity and control defects caused by the platen. The adhesive between the top pad and sub pad must be strong enough to prevent separation during polishing, while the adhesive between the sub pad and platen should allow easy removal and residue-free adhesion. Polyurethane is commonly used as the primary material for pads due to its availability, ability to be synthesized in various hardness levels, and resistance to impact, friction, cutting, and tearing. It also exhibits excellent chemical resistance, making it compatible with a wide range of pH levels in slurries. The EPD window, a transparent section in the pad, allows laser signals to pass through and is used for endpoint detection by monitoring changes in the wafer surface condition. Finally, the pad conditioner is used to maintain the pad's surface state and roughness during the CMP process. As polishing progresses, abrasive byproducts and slurry particles accumulate on the pad surface, leading to a reduction in roughness. Additionally, where differences between the center, middle, and edge of the pad occur due to the wafer's relative rotational movement and trajectory. To enhance process uniformity and stability, it is essential to refresh or maintain the pad surface condition over time. The conditioning module in CMP equipment performs this role, with the diamond disc being a crucial tool for refreshing the pad. The diamond disc, which uses artificial diamond adhered to a base substrate through brazing or electroplating methods, directly contacts the pad to restore its surface roughness and effectiveness. <laughs> In this final section, we will explore the application of CMP in semiconductor chip fabrication. CMP technology was initially developed to enhance the depth of focus margin in photolithography processes by smoothing surfaces. This planarization was critical in the early 1980s, as it allowed for increased metallization levels by addressing topographical variations that would otherwise limit the number of metal layers and negatively impact device performance and photolithography accuracy. As device sizes have continued to shrink, CMP processes have expanded beyond simple planarization to include a variety of applications aimed at improving device defects, removing films from bevel regions, and addressing diverse requirements for new materials. With advances in device technology, the number of CMP processes required per device has increased, along with more stringent criteria for managing issues, such as dishing, erosion, scratches, and defect sizes. Now let's categorize CMP processes based on their specific applications in this slide. The first application is planarization CMP. This process is crucial for removing topographies that form after depositing interlayer dielectrics known as ILD, or pre-metal dielectrics known as PMD, which are typically SiO2 films deposited over gate or metal line patterns. This planarization is essential for enhancing the depth of focus in photolithography. Without effective planarization, the ability to add additional metal layers was limited due to increased topographical variations. Planarization CMP can be further divided into local planarization and global planarization. 
Local planarization targets the removal of oxide topography from underlying gate or metal patterns, while global planarization aims to reduce step height differences between cell and peripheral regions. This is particularly necessary for ILD CMP following the MAO. Formation of high aspect ratio structures such as DRAM capacitors or 3D NAND gate stacks, where precise planarization is critical for subsequent processing. The second application is isolation CMP. This process is used to electrically isolate neighboring device components. During the fabrication of microprocessor chips, such as CPUs, application processors, MPUs, or GPUs, CMP plays a critical role at every step from front end of line to back end of line. For instance, STI CMP or shallow trench isolation CMP is used to isolate neighboring transistors. This involves forming shallow trenches through photolithography and dry etching, filling these trenches with oxide, and then using CMP to remove excess oxide, ensuring electrical isolation. RMG CMP or replacement metal gate CMP isolates neighboring metal gates in modern semiconductor chips. This process involves replacing a dummy polygate with high K dielectrics and metal gate materials, and then removing excess materials from the gate trench by CMP. Plug W CMP is used to isolate neighboring contacts that connect source, drain, and gate to overlying metal lines. This involves forming contact patterns, filling them with tungsten, and then using CMP to remove excess tungsten and ensure complete removal of barrier metals. Finally, dual damascene copper CMP isolates neighboring metal lines. This method involves filling materials into inlaid patterns, a technique historically linked to the Damascus region, and performing CMP to remove excess copper and other materials in both metal lines and via holes. This process may be repeated multiple times for local and global interconnects. In addition to these primary applications, CMP technology continues to evolve and find new uses. Examples include removing surface topology from rough thin films, using chemical polishing to eliminate sticky particles, cleaning particles from the wafer backside before lithography, and removing films from bevel areas. We will delve deeper into these applications in a dedicated episode to further explore the expanding role of CMP in semiconductor chip fabrication. In this slide, we're diving into the specifics of interlevel dielectric chemical mechanical planarization, commonly known as ILD CMP, and its application in semiconductor chip fabrication. ILD CMP was originally developed to address the challenges associated with maintaining the depth of focus margin, which is crucial for high precision photolithography processes. As semiconductor devices have become increasingly miniaturized, ILD CMP has become essential in ensuring the quality and reliability of the chip manufacturing process. The need for ILD CMP emerged due to the difficulties posed by shrinking semiconductor geometries. After transistors are fabricated on the silicon substrate, a layer of interlevel dielectric, usually made of silicon oxide, is deposited. This dielectric layer plays a critical role in electrically insulating the transistors from the subsequent metal layers. However, the deposition of this layer often mirrors the topography of the underlying substrate, leading to surface variations that can complicate further processing steps. These surface variations introduced by the topography create several challenges. During photolithography, for instance, uneven surfaces can disrupt the uniform focus of images across the wafer. This issue is exacerbated by the need for higher numerical apertures to accommodate increasingly smaller feature sizes. To maintain precise focus and alignment during lithography, it is necessary to reduce the surface topography, which is where ILD CMP comes into play. Initially, Solutions like borophosphosilicate glass or BPSG and spin coating with materials such as spin-on glass or polyamide were explored. However, these methods did not fully resolve the issue of step height variations, particularly in areas with varying pattern densities. Another significant challenge arose during the etchback process, which is used to remove unnecessary tungsten material from the ILD layer, leaving only the tungsten plug that is specifically needed for the transistor contacts. This etchback process often left behind metal stringers due to uneven gate topography. Overetching was required to remove these residues, which could compromise the integrity of the contacts and the overall performance of the transistors. Physical vapor deposition, or PVD techniques, also face difficulties with poor sidewall step coverage during aluminum deposition for metal lines. This issue further complicated subsequent processing steps. To address these challenges, oxide CMP was developed. CMP emerged as the most effective method for achieving global planarization across the wafer. It successfully smooths out surface topography from both transistor layers and etched aluminum lines. This local planarization is vital for maintaining precise control over lithography depth of field and for facilitating the formation of vertical etched vias that are filled with materials like CVD tungsten. After ILD CMP, the planarized dielectric surface undergoes etching to create metal trenches and vias. 
This is followed by additional metal CMP steps to further planarize the surface. It is crucial that the ILD CMP process achieves accurate dielectric thickness and minimal surface defects to ensure the success of subsequent etching and deposition processes. The development and implementation of ILD CMP have been marked by continuous innovation. Notably, IBM's early efforts in 1986 utilized equipment adapted from the silicon wafer supply chain. This highlighted the collaborative and pioneering spirit that has driven the advancements in CMP technology over the years. However, early ILD CMP process notably encountered challenges like the issue of scratches on the oxide surface. These scratches, while they might appear minor, led to significant issues like plug-to-plug -plug tungsten shorts, as illustrated in the top left figure. These shorts were caused by residual tungsten trapped within the scratches from the ILD CMP process, which were often not visible to the naked eye. The primary type of scratch associated with this problem is known as a chatter defect, which is produced by repetitive stick and slip actions of abrasive particles. This defect is similar to the chatter marks you get when drawing a long line on a blackboard with white chalk, where repeated scratching creates uneven grooves, as shown in the short video at the bottom left. By 1987, the limitations of the tungsten etchback process, which was widely used at that time, became increasingly apparent. This realization led to the development of a tungsten CMP process. A constructive competition began among three IBM locations, each working to create an effective tungsten CMP process. One of the major challenges was the lack of a dedicated tungsten polishing slurry on the market. To address this, an interim slurry was developed using alumina abrasive particles mixed with iron salt oxidizers and water, which served as a temporary solution until a specific tungsten slurry could be developed. The introduction of the tungsten CMP process marked a pivotal advancement in semiconductor manufacturing. Early production runs using this method showed a significant improvement in yield compared to the etchback method. The CMP process involved an overetch step that not only removed excess tungsten and barrier film, but also reduced the oxide surface enough to eliminate any remaining tungsten residues trapped in the scratches from the ILD CMP process. This development enabled the first large-scale production using four-level interconnects and CMP, beginning in 1989. The tungsten damascene process, which is a key application of tungsten CMP, starts with a fully planarized dielectric surface that has been patterned with vertical contact holes. These holes, which are smaller and more closely spaced than those in previous processes, are filled with tungsten through a chemical vapor deposition CVD, process. During this process, tungsten hexafluoride decomposes on the wafer surface, resulting in a crystalline tungsten film that fills the holes from all sides. The outcome is a hole completely filled with metal, leaving only a narrow seam. Before the tungsten deposition, a barrier and adhesion layer is applied. This layer reduces electrical resistance to the underlying metal and protects it from the corrosive effects of the tungsten CVD chemistry. Afterward, a CMP process is used to remove the excess tungsten from the surface, ensuring that the contact holes remain filled. This polishing process is carefully designed to selectively remove tungsten while using the underlying dielectric as a stopping layer to improve process accuracy. Finally, a metal layer is patterned on top of the filled contacts to complete the circuit. The tungsten CMP process is repeated with each oxide planarization step, enabling the addition of each wiring level to the integrated circuit. In this slide, we are going to explore the application of STI CMP in semiconductor chip manufacturing, focusing on its evolution and significance. To start, it's important to understand that the rise of chemical mechanical planarization, or CMP technology came at a time when chemical vapor deposition or CVD technologists were also making significant advancements. They developed silicon oxide deposits that could effectively fill shallow trenches without creating stress risers at the trench bottoms. This progress made shallow trench isolation, or STI, not only possible but practical, thanks to the use of electron cyclotron resonance or ECR plasma deposition sources. The integration of ECR technology with CMP facilitated the effective implementation of STI, marking a major advancement in semiconductor fabrication. Initially, when STI was being implemented at IBM, the technology borrowed pads and slurries from the ILD CMP process. However, it was soon discovered that scratches caused by the fumed silica abrasive used in these slurries were detrimental to yields during this critical early manufacturing stage. To address this issue, alternatives such as precipitated silica were explored. Although these alternatives initially had slower removal rates, careful experimentation and optimization of process conditions and slurry compositions eventually led to a successful formula. During this period, the term colloidal silica was established for the precipitated material, a term that remains widely used today. More recently, serious slurries have become popular due to their high silicon dioxide removal rates and excellent selectivity against silicon nitride.
STI technology was first introduced at the 0.25 micrometer node, gradually replacing the traditional locus structures to provide dielectric isolation between transistors. LOCUS, which stands for Local Oxidation of Silicon, involved growing an isolation thermal oxide through local wet oxidation of the silicon substrate. However, LOCUS had significant drawbacks, including the formation of unwanted thermal oxide known as bird's beak due to lateral oxidation. This bird's beak effect reduced the active silicon area available for transistor formation, thereby limiting transistor packing density. Additionally, the topography created by the thermal oxide posed challenges during gate patterning. In contrast, the STI scheme starts with the dry etching of the silicon substrate, followed by CVD oxide gap fill and then the STI CMP process. The vertical slope of the trenches formed by dry etching allows for a higher packing density of transistors. STI CMP ensures a planar topography of the isolation oxide, which greatly simplifies gate patterning. By the late 1980s, IBM's STI process was applied in Japan for various logic and DRAM devices. This led to widespread industrial adoption of different CMP variants by companies such as NEC, National Semiconductors, and Hitachi. In 1988, Cybeg introduced the first commercial polisher specifically designed for CMP in Japan. Later, International Semitech recognized CMP as a key technology for the future of IC manufacturing and collaborated with Westec to develop advanced CMP tools in the United States. By 2005, with the introduction of the 65 nanometer node, the scratches left by colloidal silica on silicon dioxide films had become too significant, prompting the need for improvements in abrasives. Within a year, STI CMP switched from colloidal silica to calcined Syria abrasive due to its lower scratch count and higher removal rate, a change inspired by similar improvements in glass lens polishing from nearly 80 years prior. Subsequent scaling efforts have transitioned Syria particles from calcined to colloidal to nano Syria following the trend of transitioning from fumed to colloidal silica. Each generation of smaller particles has resulted in longer polishing times but smoother surfaces. This thorough evolution of STI-CMP demonstrates its critical role in semiconductor manufacturing, continuously advancing to meet the demands of increasingly sophisticated technology. In this slide, we will explore the role of copper CMP in semiconductor chip fabrication, focusing on its evolution, challenges, and impact on modern technology. Initially, aluminum was the standard material for interconnects in semiconductor devices due to its favorable properties such as low resistivity and widespread availability. However, as device dimensions began to shrink below the submicron scale, the limitations of aluminum became more pronounced. Aluminum's relatively high electrical resistivity led to an issue known as RC delay, which is a slowdown in digital signal transmission rates. Additionally, aluminum's susceptibility to electromigration resulted in metal thinning and posed significant challenges for high-power density applications. To address these challenges, the Semiconductor Industry Association, SIA, projected a need for materials with better performance characteristics as feature sizes were expected to shrink to 0.35 micrometers by 1995 and further to 0.25 micrometers by 1997. Copper emerged as the superior alternative to aluminum. Copper offers approximately two-thirds the electrical resistivity of aluminum and exhibits better resistance to electromigration. Furthermore, the transition to copper brought potential cost reductions because the copper damascene process, which involves fewer steps compared to traditional aluminum patterning, promised efficiency gains. This efficiency was due to the higher packing density that smaller feature sizes enabled. By 1997, leading chip manufacturers such as IBM, Motorola, and Texas Instruments had announced their plans to integrate copper into production. A significant milestone occurred when IBM unveiled its dual damascene copper interconnect technology in late 1997. Copper CMP played a crucial role in this development, marking a major advancement in CMP technology. As technology nodes continued to shrink and new materials were introduced, copper CMP faced new challenges. For example, low-K dielectric materials, which are highly porous and have low mechanical strength, are prone to mechanical damage during copper CMP. To minimize wafer-level defects and issues such as dielectric film collapse and delamination, precise process design and control are essential. Performance metrics for copper CMP include removal rates, selectivity to the barrier layer, global and local planarity, surface topography, dishing and erosion, and wafer-level defects. The dual damascene process revolutionized copper interconnect technology by allowing both wiring levels and interlevel connections to be created in a single polishing step. This process involves two patterning steps to form features at different depths, followed by blanket metal deposition and a single CMP step to define the inlaid structure. The dual damascene process offered superior planarity and defectivity, 
enabling the incorporation of additional levels into the chip compared to aluminum wiring processes. In practice, the removal of copper in the barrier layer typically requires two distinct slurries. Initially, PVD tantalum nitride, tantalum barrier technology was used. But as technology nodes shrank to 22 nanometers, CVD cobalt or ruthenium liners became more common. The industry shift to dual damascene copper interconnects has resulted in an increase in the number of metal levels in chips, now ranging from 10 to 14 levels. Leading-edge technologies predominantly feature 100% copper interconnects, making them entirely dependent on CMP. This advancement has significantly increased the demand for CMP equipment and consumables per wafer, highlighting the critical role of CMP in modern semiconductor manufacturing. In this presentation, we will delve into the replacement metal gate or RMG process, which is integral to the fabrication of advanced semiconductor logic devices. This process plays a crucial role in the creation of metal gate electrodes for high K metal gates, an innovation introduced by Intel at the 45 nanometer technology node in 2007. We will examine the intricacies of the RMG scheme, also known as the gate last scheme, and compare it to the traditional gate first scheme approach. In the gate first approach, the gate structure is fabricated prior to the formation of the source and drain regions of the transistor. This traditional method involves creating the gate first and then forming the source and drain. In contrast, the gate last scheme reverses this sequence. In this method, the source and drain regions are formed first, followed by the creation of a dummy polysilicon gate. This dummy gate is later replaced with a metal gate. The gate last scheme enhances source drain implant activation. Since the metal gate is formed after the source and drain regions, it does not experience the thermal stress associated with the implant activation process. This reduction in thermal stress allows for the use of materials for the metal gate that might otherwise degrade under high temperatures, thereby expanding the range of materials that can be used. The gate last process starts with the creation of a dummy polysilicon gate. Next, silicon nitride and contact etch, stop layers are deposited. CMP is then used to remove the dielectric material deposited over the silicon nitride film until the film covering the dummy gate is exposed. This initial CMP step is known as polyopening CMP or POC. After the dummy gate is exposed, it is etched away, leaving a trench that will be filled with metal. Subsequently, high K material for the gate oxide and metal material for the gate electrode are deposited in sequence. Finally, a CMP step referred to as metal gate CMP is performed to remove excess metal from the recessed trench, resulting in the formation of the final metal gate. The replacement metal gate CMP or RMG CMP process involves two critical CMP steps. The first step, poly opening CMP aims to remove the dielectric material to expose the silicon nitride film while minimizing the loss of silicon nitride. To achieve this, a slurry with high selectivity for removing silicon dioxide over silicon nitride is used. The required selectivity ratio for this process is typically more than 50 to 1. The second step, metal gate CMP, deals with the topography challenges left from the first POC step. Proper management of the process margin is crucial to avoid excessive overpolishing, which can lead to thin gates with high resistance. Key concerns during RMG CMP include metal dishing and erosion, maintaining uniform metal gate height, and minimizing wafer-level defects. Both CMP steps require highly precise process control due to their narrow margins. Given the small dimensions of the gate, the yield of the metal gate device is highly dependent on minimizing CMP-induced defects. In fin FET structures, the RMG CMP process has an even more significant impact, particularly on fin height. As fin FET technology advances, precise control over the CMP process becomes critical not only for the CMP process itself, but also for managing the gate pattern density range. This necessitates extremely rigorous process control to ensure that variations in fin height and other dimensions are kept within tight tolerances. Therefore, achieving high precision and control throughout the CMP process is essential for maintaining high yields and device performance in modern semiconductor manufacturing. In this final section, we explored how the application of CMP has evolved in modern semiconductor processor chips, highlighting the technological challenges and solutions in a chronological sequence. Initially, CMP was primarily used for shallow trench isolation, or STI, and for interlayer dielectric, or ILD, planarization. These early applications were essential for achieving the smoothness and uniformity of the semiconductor surface, which is crucial for the successful deposition of subsequent material layers. However, as the semiconductor industry advanced, so did the complexity of device structures, necessitating the development of additional CMP processes. The shift towards more sophisticated technology nodes brought about significant changes in semiconductor device complexity. Innovations such as fin formation and replacement metal gate or RMG technology were introduced to address these complexities. 
This evolution led to a dramatic increase in the number of CMP steps required in both the front end of line or feel and the middle of line or mole segments. Today, the total number of CMP processes in advanced semiconductor manufacturing has risen to at least 25 steps, as briefly outlined in the STI, RMG, ILD, and copper CMP processes. This increase is visually represented in the left figure, which illustrates the application of CMP in modern FinFET device structures. As we progress to advanced technology nodes, depicted in the right figure, the number of CMP steps has expanded significantly. CMP applications can now be found across all three segments of the process, flow, fuel, mole, and biol. Fuel encompasses the steps involved in forming the transistor itself. Mole includes the various steps required to create the contact metal plug, typically tungsten or cobalt. Biol refers to the processes that form multi-layer interconnects and the final passivation layer. A notable increase in CMP steps has been observed in the fuel and mole areas. This surge is primarily due to new integration schemes, such as RMG and self-aligned contact or SAC modules. Specifically, the number of CMP steps increased fourfold when transitioning from the 28 nanometers node to the 14 nanometers node, largely due to the requirements of RMG and fin formation. CMP has become a crucial process in fabricating the transistor gate and controlling gate height, which significantly impacts overall device performance and die yield. In advanced semiconductor technology nodes, CMP is no longer a mere planarization process. The requirements for CMP have evolved beyond the capabilities of conventional methods, necessitating holistic process improvements. These improvements include implementing pattern density rules, generating dummy patterns, and restricting design rules. Furthermore, the cost associated with CMP consumables is now comparable to that of the ARF lithography process due to the high consumption of slurry and pads. Many consumables are used for only a single chip level, making it difficult to recoup development costs. The proliferation of various low-K dielectric materials and corresponding process integration schemes has similarly affected CMP development for copper interconnects beyond silicon oxide. This transformation in the CMP industry, especially concerning slurries, marks a significant milestone. The industry has shifted from high-volume, low-part number operations to highly customized solutions tailored for each fab. This shift underscore the critical role of CMP in advancing semiconductor technology and highlights the challenges and opportunities it presents in the manufacturing process. Farewell Silicon Pioneers! Today we embarked on a journey into the world of CMP technology, tailored for beginners and offering a foundational overview. My goal was to illuminate key concepts for those aspiring to excel as CMP engineers or work closely with experts in the field. I hope you gained insight into how CMP technology originated and evolved, overcoming challenges throughout its development in the semiconductor industry. While we've aimed to stay updated with the latest advancements, I acknowledge the constraints of video length, limited business information, and the ongoing evolution of technology. This episode serves as an introduction to CMP technology. In the upcoming four episodes, we will delve into more technical details and comprehensive topics, including CMP equipment, CMP processes, post-CMP cleaning, and CMP consumables. For those passionate about technology, these discussions offer a wealth of knowledge. Understanding these technologies deeply is essential for driving innovation, as evidenced by the progress in CMP technology. Sharing this knowledge is crucial for building the foundation for the next generation of tech enthusiasts who will lead future breakthroughs. If you have a topic you're eager to explore, please suggest it in the comments. I am open to considering it for our future content. If today's episode sparked your interest, I encourage you to explore the rest of our series. Your engagement, through likes, subscriptions, notifications or super thanks, greatly supports our channel and fuels our passion for spreading knowledge. Your enthusiasm and curiosity are the heart of semi-slides. We have many fascinating subjects ahead, and I look forward to continuing this educational journey with you. Until we meet again, keep innovating and stay semiconductive.